Let me, let me drink one time, please. Yeah, I please. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, so good night, everybody, and welcome to Straight Note Chaser, the podcast where we speak about everything in the way that we do in our group chat, unfiltered. And tonight we have a wonderful guest with us. It's a man. We have with us the very popular Mm-mm. Sandman. Yep. Good night. Oh. Did he use his sexy voice again? He did. He uses like Fletcher. Oh, I'm recovering from the cool. Okay, there's a terrible cool going around, and I just we have COVID going around. Yes, that's what I tell him. I tell him is I tell him how to be COVID. I tell him it how to be. Are they still doing testing for that? Yeah, the numbers are like eighty something right now. Yeah, Yeah, so some goes. Are they they putting out things? I mean, it's out, but I don't think people being as vigilant as we were during the pandemic to check and see the numbers. We can't afford to be. No. Are they publicizing these things? I don't know how. I don't know where. It's on the world stats. Well, from what I've heard from my healthcare practitioner was that the the tests that, you know, we would have gotten from year before's outbreak or last year's outbreak, Mm. it's going to pick up the strains that are prominent now. I don't know how accurate that is. So the homemade test, you have to go and get lab tested to in order to come up with a diagnosis. But like what I had it was very reminiscent to when I had, you know, COVID. It was oh wow. It was a lot of fun. Which is all gone. Well, you know, who who knows? She always gone. We appreciate the sexy deep voice, no, but we, we want you to feel better. Yes. Yes, do we feel better, thanks. Sandman. We give thanks for the deep voice. I'm good. I'm good. We love it. Sandman is a well-known everything in Grenada. He's a producer, extraordinaire songwriter, um, a very good pool player, as far as I remember. Yes, right. And uh, like I know him real long. And also, most recently and most publicized right now, he is a baker of the best cheesecakes in Grenada. We give him a round of applause. Wait, when did this start? Because I love cheesecake and oh. I did not have cheesecake. Well, oh. Giselle says she knows me a long time now, but like if she says recently, then that means she doesn't know me a long time because I've been doing that since college. Like, yeah, okay. but it's taken off in a bigger way now. That's what I mean. That's okay. Well, but the the cheese quakes are, 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 are that's why I just always tell people, you know, say what you mean. Say what you mean. <laughs> okay, well, all you know what I need to get when I land, eh? so. Yes. Note. Thank you. Yeah. To be That's honest, right. somebody asked me to ask Sandman about the cheesecake and if they could just if you could just drop it by their doorstep. I was like, yes, yeah, yeah, of course. I do delivery. It's fine. It's, we could we could work it out. Nice. Fantastic. Yeah, but the cheesecake thing started in college <clears throat> when oh. I was um, when I was fat and gameless, and <laughs> it was um, it was a ploy to you know start conversation. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, it worked to, to a degree. Not you cooking to get girl? 20, 20 years <laughs> later, you know. 20 years later, here I am, you know, still fat and gameless, but I can make cheesecake now. <laughs> yeah. so, what a sell. I wouldn't say gameless. <laughs> right? <laughs> Not say gameless. Oh, oh gosh. I still talk on fat and gameless. Hmm? I so, you, so you see the first part? That's where I stuck. <laughs> wow. I stuck. Wow. <laughs> it's not because I didn't expect that particular combination okay. of okay. words. Go ahead, go ahead. You finish? <laughs> Let's continue. Yeah, you're anybody on mute, girl. You're anybody but Giselle. Anybody but Giselle. Let's go. All right. I think he came prepared for you in particular. Uh-huh. He... I know, I know, I know. It's I'm... not a problem, though. That's fine. It's fine. What we have to let people know is that Giselle does antagonize her friends. All yeah, the that's time. how you know he's so, my friend. Yeah. So they just had to come with Vimfa. So when mm-hmm. you, find, you hear me you know, saying Sandman, oh. it's because I'm really trying to stay within my parameters tonight because I was given guidelines and I must stick within them. Wow. What anyway, a- before we get into heavy conversation, we are taking a shot together as we normally do. Yes. Ooh. 
I forgot you have a shot. Eye? All I have, no, I just have, I have bear though. I'll have the shot fine. of the bear. Yeah. <laughs> Take a swig. All right. Woo! Cheers. I'll make a little shot. Cheers, guys. Cheers, y'all. Cheers to a great episode. Right. Ooh. Um, so tonight's episode is about adulting and getting our shit together. Is it a myth like the Loch Ness Monster? Yeah. Or is it something that's attainable? We ask a bunch of questions online. We have a bunch of questions for inside. And I'm very interested in hearing Sandman's mm -hmm. take on things. Because, I like we've... I like <laughs> because we've had a short previous conversation, which was really very lovely. And I think that was one of the things that made us decide that we're going to ask you to be on here in the first place. We don't often like conversation with fellas, eh? So. That's, that's a good... Oh, go fix your face, man. That's a good thing, dog. What is that? You're not the easiest to talk to. So I some I kind of... So I some kind of snitch or traitor or something like that? I, I know. No, you make oh. sense. Huh? You make sense. Oh, you mean back at the um back in 360 when we spoke at the table? Yeah, there, yeah. there made sense. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Was I drinking anything? Do you remember? Not that we know of. Oh, okay. That's okay. our knowledge. Were right, we so drinking? We can proceed. Nah, bro was dry. It was it was dry January for me. I oh know we had I know I know we had a late participant was definitely dry. That was the last one that came. But um, I think I was okay. Yeah, I think I vaguely remember the numerous topics that we began. Yes, to... we touched on a lot. So we, we touched a, on a lot in we our short time. Yeah, we got to those. No, um, no, I feel like I don't think so. Oh, okay. I don't remember what we talked about. All right, <laughs> we could go to the points. Some of them yeah. might go against the bro code, you know. What I'm saying we can't really. No, no, please, no. Oh, well, you don't have to. No, you can protect keep with your bro code. Protect yeah. yourself. Protect right. yourself. You know. Right, cool. right. Do right. we guys? I, I am not going to tell anybody <laughs> to break any type What's of code. Giselle face? Giselle Vix. <laughs> she say nothing. <laughs> yeah. You can tell us all the secrets. We won't tell no. the boys you came. I tell the boys. There we go. There we go. Maybe we hoping that the boys watch the show getting... and they'll find out for ah. themselves. If I was a snitch, which I'm not, she spoiled all your way. Yeah. Check out, check out, check out, check out. Did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they calling on to Sandman dreams? On Mr. Sandman. Can we drink every time you say Sandman? Sandman. Yes. I have, a, I have a friend that says it like that. I have a friend that says it like that in my bridging. Like, I don't know what's, what's, what's him with D's, but anything with a D, he, had, he, he must say it. Okay. Is it? I like to say it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bro, please give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me a high five. Ron, Jans, I feel like you should just keep yourself off mute. Eh? All right, let me move on. I'm worried yeah. that I have background noise. No, you don't. No, you you're fine. Don't. You're fine. Oh, okay. All right. Let's tell sorry. All right. Keep it quiet. All right. So we're gonna start with the poll questions. Who is the reader of the poll questions? I got it. Teams. So we asked a couple. Well, of, it could be me. We oh, asked a couple of poll questions and then some open-ended questions. So the first thing, of course, we just ask adulting. Our <laughs> options were: I got this, meh, and I want to be a kid again. I chose the latter. <laughs> I will say <laughs> nobody said I got this. <laughs> Zero percent. Forty eight percent said got. meh. And then fifty two percent said they want to be a kid again. Yeah, How y'all feel? Spend my parents' money guilt free. You know? <laughs> I responded That's to this one and I said that at different times. There we go. In 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 the week, in the month, in the mm. year, mm. I mm. feel each one of those things. Cause exactly. That's... On Saturday, I felt like <laughs> I got this, <laughs> but mm. today Monday, I felt like I want to be a kid again. And tomorrow, I think it might very well be me. Yeah, yeah. One time, one time they pay bills, it might be the last one. You know. Yeah. When you, you know, when you 
probably in effect or something, spending money and drinking and thinking it might be the first one I got this. And then generally it's just meh. Yeah. But it definitely fluctuates um for me. But I can say that I can say that if if I was given a timeline between after I exited, you know, um be, um being a teenager to now. It escalated from wanting to be a kid directly after to meh. Yeah, it's okay, all right. But then where I'm at now, I, I'm, I'm starting to feel like I'm getting a grasp of um a lot of things that I was unable to to have control of, you know, in the past. You know, it's still seasoned by the other two, you know, occasionally because, you know. Seasoned. Yeah, a little salt bay. You know. A little salt bay. Yeah. But, you know, it, it don't stay there for long, to be honest, because there's always a way, in, you know, that I, I try to find ways to get out of those situations to, to, to regain control, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense for sure. I remember sending, Thanks. I sent the girls a meme this week where it said, I sometimes I wish I could have the confidence of a toddler as as an adult, so that if I don't want to talk to somebody, I can just say no in their face and run away. If a toddler doesn't want to do anything, right? They'll just say no and run they off. Don't. So, so it's like, but as an adult, yeah. we can't do that because we actually have repercussions that might come from that. So, like today, I was spending way too much time not doing what I should have been doing which was like following up on some emails with some of my clients but it's like but I know I have to be an adult so today was kind of meh but as Sandman said just it's a meh but sometimes tomorrow I'll be like I got this this weekend I was just kind of like I want to be a kid again sometimes when I'm in temple I feel like I just want to fall asleep and not be judged to not to be honest but <laughs> But yeah, so exactly. Those things changed. I could see why a lot of people put nobody like said, I got this 100%. So, yeah. We don't got this all the time, for sure. Definitely don't. I felt like on Saturday. Sometimes we do feel like we got this, you know. Saturday morning, like I went through all three phases on Saturday itself, in the 24 hours. In the morning, that card went through for that day pass. I got this. Went home drunk, fell asleep. Eh. Wake up in the morning, I was like, I want to be a kid again. I don't want to do this anymore. Whole day there, that 24 hours was that. But yeah, I mostly feel the meh part though. I don't want to be a kid again. Uh, no thanks. No me. <laughs> I don't. Kids ain't I shit. Don't either. Sorry. I mean, yeah. we're, and I'm well, having so well, much see. fun right now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I just wish I had the music of a nice-year-old. I can say that. As a teacher, sorry. As a teacher? Yeah. What did she say? No, no, no. I think he's in shape. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can we be the general kid? Not their personalities, not the individual personalities. You know, the general, the general child. Sorry to the people that have kids. You also, as a former though, teacher, like I stand with Giselle. Giselle, you know, I understand what you're saying. And kids, ancient, they're beautiful, lovely. They give the best hugs. Have the but best. What's the other people? You know, what's the other people? They're mean. They're so mean to yeah. each other, to their parents, to mm. you. They try. What is group they... talking about, though? Oh, primary school children. Oh, primary school too. Okay. Secondary that school children like are terrible biggest. too. Yeah, no, they're, they're even mean at parents. Yeah, they're mean. Oh my god. But like, and they as smell as, worse. As, as, as you're right, as you said that, um, I can't help but I'm uh, always having this discussion as of late. Everyone talks about I don't know how how many children you would interacted with between the ages of like four and six. But um, I just find like the kids these days are so developed and fast forwarded in terms of take their... away the forward. They forward still. <laughs> okay. Oh, put a fast. comma. Put a put a comma. They fast. 
understand. I don't know what, but listen to me, like I've been I've, I've I've recently been privy to interacting with some kids. And I just get blown away, like, wow, how old is that child? That child is five years old. Listen to what the kid's saying. And I thought, you know, the first one I met, it was like, okay, maybe that's a prodigy or something. But then along come six or seven or eight other kids, you know, talking about solar systems and nebulas. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about, kid? You know what you're saying there? And, you know, I, I attribute it to the exposure, where of course, is technology, right? It's got to be because, you know, all the mm -hmm. kids know how to navigate a tablet, a to navigate, you know, to YouTube, to watch their shows, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, that's what they have. But what do we have? What did we have when we was growing up? We had, like, marbles. Outside. I had a speak and spell. Yeah, Hopscotch. Like Hopscotch, marbles, and, and dog. Moral. Giselle had a dog. And I had a what? Cyclopedia. Idea. Oh yeah. yes, so, I find I saw the encyclopedia collection. You know, I'm trying to see. Yeah. Oh shit! I had an encyclopedia. Oh, Rohan went off. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I had an encyclopedia. Yeah. 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 Yeah
But you know, is no because it, I would do so. I would do something like that. Okay. Yeah. Knuckle you know, up. And I told his mom. Knuckle I would tell his mom, like you know, we was you know we were just playing around, you know, and that and that's what happened, you know. Oh man. Maybe I was playing. It is what it maybe is. Maybe I was playing. Maybe I wasn't. You know. But at the end of the day, um. That's how we grew up because I had I was exposed to a lot of that when I was growing up. I used to play around and you know get my ass whooped. It wasn't you like, have to have boy days. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think I, I gave him a little bit of boy days. Because a lot of his boy days probably behind our control too. And boy days is black and blue sometimes. Yeah, but that might not have been me that caused that. Because yeah, no, bruiser too is alright. Right. So, it may I not have been you that caused that. Nah, nah, no. Okay. Nah, fair, fair, not. fair. What's the next question be before? <laughs> so the next fair. one was Do you think there's a point when one has everything together? The answer choices were no way or yep. Unsurprisingly, no way was 92% and yep was 8%. I am a big fan of the no way. Yeah. Same, because I feel like, kind of like what we said before, yeah. things are always changing. And I'd also think there's different categories, at least for me internally, of like where you do have your shit together on some things and don't have on other things. And then even in those categories, like time changes. Like, for example, like in my whole like uh, health journey, right, with like the diabetes diagnosis, like. I thought I had my shit together and then I get to that and I'm like, shit, I need to turn around and pivot that and embark on a separate journey. So like just different ways. I, I agree. It's with that. It's mine's on the no way as well. I think it's changing in different categories too. I'm a big fan of the no way because it's like I said, it's never, everything is never, for me, is never together. And I've seen that in different aspects of my life. So I might have had everything going on good in one one area, but then, you know, I ain't got no money. I might have a good job, but I don't have a good, like, you know, I might have a good man, I don't have good money, I don't have this, or something like that. Like, you know, it's just, it's never all together, but it's also your definition of what together is, I guess. Yeah, you're right. So, you know, for me, it's never all together, but it's not bad that it's not all together. I just think that's part of being an adult, trying to balance everything and juggle everything. You ever, you all ever been looking at a movie and something, something good just happened and then the, the music slows down the, the music starts to play and the camera focuses focuses on the like the the star of the movie and they are smiling and the music is playing and it starts to slow down that's my cue to know when something fucked up is, is about to happen yeah right mm -hmm. so that's real life i have a couple situations with where, where that where that has been um the case you know you're, you you think you're, you have everything going everything is going so well and you know you pause and you, you take a moment to relish in the mm -hmm. good feeling as and then you get blindsided by 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 something take for instance I, you heard a, you, you mentioned a diabetes diagnosis you know i, I um i remember when i was like 170 pounds and decided I want to lose weight, right? So I did. I chopped it all the way down to like 180 something. Um, and then COVID hit. And, you know, we couldn't go to gyms, etc. anymore. But, you know, everyone was doing the whole keep fit kind of vibe and everyone doing the exercises home, whatever. I would just make laps around where I live. And so one morning I was running and in my heart, did this put the bab up in my chest. So I stops and I'm like, all right, well, what the hell is that? You know, comes down and I start again and it does it again. And right before that was when I thought I was getting stuff together. Like I felt, you know, at my healthiest. And all in an instant when that happened, it was like going oh, straight back down to zero because, you know, what ex exacerbated that was that COVID, COVID was about, you know, we finally get some free time to 
to be outside. I was outside trying to exercise. And there's no cardiologist on the island now. So I don't know what the hell going on with me. And um, basically, <clears throat> I was home, you know, a lit like literally petrified because of because I didn't know what the hell was going on. Nobody can say nothing because nobody could test it. You go get an EKG. My my um, my GP looked at the EKG, and she's like, "What? No, 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 no!" She stuffs it in an envelope, and she said, "Go take this to whoever, so and so." Imagine how that made me feel. So at that point in time, everything was spiraling out of control. And that was a pivotal moment where I genuinely stopped taking things for granted. That very moment. Like everything else, all, all you know, I, you know, you, you, when you're watching a movie and then somebody life flat before the eyes, you see all kind of pictures and, you know, the X's and all that, all that type of shit. All of that happened. And I stopped taking shit for granted. From that room. So for now, I don't take none for granted. Zero. Nothing. It, I mean, it turns out that I mean I'm I'm okay. It was anxiety. It was some ridiculous anxiety. You know, I had a journey, you know, a brief journey with that. But I have a, a whole new respect for when someone brings that up because I feel, I feel like a lot of people take that, take that for granted. Somebody says, Oh, I have anxiety. Like, sure, just relax, go and sleep. Nah, bro. Nah. It's not like that. And pray you never, ever have to experience that, especially an extreme case of it. So I have the utmost respect. You know, I, I have, I am very, very empathetic to anyone who says that they they, they have any, even if they make it as a joke, they, that just kill the mood for me. I just get serious. You know? Sometimes it's laughs and, oh, I have anxiety. That's me right now. So I don't take none for granted, ever. Full stop. I love that. Can I just say that usually when the guys come on here, <clears throat> like when we have male guests, I get so impressed because we know some top tier type of men. Yeah, I agree. Present company included this time too. So, <laughs> so Daryl was the last man. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Daryl was the last one. <laughs> He really was the last man, and Daryl was the last and only man. Uh, we had only. Nice. No, we've had, yeah. we've had before. That was just oh, a yeah, really most recent one. Man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I really want to ask you how you're doing now with the anxiety and so on and so on. Um, it's not existent now. Uh, wait, no, 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 no. I I can't say that. This has got there. There are. All right, so you know when things happen to uh, when things occur, right? There is there and there isn't a handle to it. You don't know what it is, right? So, for lack of a better word, you might say, "Oh, I feel sad," or "Oh, I feel like some terrible, terrible is about to happen." Like, "Oh my god," you know what to do. And nothing happening, but that's just how you feel. But they, growing up, there wasn't always a handle to it, right? Right now, there's handles to every, every goddamn thing. Everything have a handle right now. Yeah, binary, non-binary, transgender, um, ADHD, ADD, ADHD, LGBTQ, all types of handles, right? So every, there's now something that identifies almost everything right now. So um, it's, it's just a matter of, you know, seeing where you land in terms of those, you know, tags, handles. Um, so Did I you would have say, any particular activities that you had to do to, you know, deal with that feeling when it came? Oh, yeah. It's just a lot of deep breathing. Um, it's this, the most effective thing, though, was, if I remember correctly, it was to imagine the issue that you're having like manifest it as a thing it could be like a passing cloud so you, it's so whatever stressing you up you see it floating and you're looking at it and basically you look at it and realize that it's there as it passes and acknowledge it right and just let it float away and that's gone just let it go 
that was very um it sounds simple but it was that was the most effective thing that and you know the reason wow. you know some zannies now and then but um uh that's uh that was brief <clears throat> it was very brief it was um it was like a week and uh, <clears throat> you know the box like oh take these this will make you feel better I'm like what's that? You used to tell me what it was like. Oh, you mean the same thing they'll be rapping about? <laughs> and I was like, do I need that? He's like, I mean, I mean, nothing's wrong with it. There's a, there's a, a there's taboo affiliated with it because you know people, uh, you know, generally have this mindset that you know if you if if you need to take, you know, something you're crazy or whatever, or whatever it was. It's just like me. I was like, oh, that dog, hey, dog, I don't take in that. <laughs> and he was like, you know, it's okay. It's going to alleviate, it's going to help you get through what you're getting through. I said, but I don't want to get it. I don't generally, generally don't get addicted to nothing. Is your hand up, Giselle? No, I was saying hi to Ru because I can see her now. Oh. Okay. okay. Am I like steady? You are, and you're not freezing every so often. Yeah. Perfect. That's good. Thank you for sharing that, though, Sandman. Okay. Take a drink again. I really appreciate that. No, no jokes aside. I like when people can <laughs> parts of themselves. We like the joke. So. <laughs> You're drunk. Okay. All right. Question B. So the next poll question was, what do you think about the most? The past, the present, the future? 4% said the past. 39% said the present. 57% said the future. Who wants to start? I mean, that's where my anxiety pops in. So I'm like constantly thinking about the future and like where I'm supposed to be and like, and not just like being where I am and accepting where I am and like working towards something. But it's always like, I'm supposed to be here. This is what I'm supposed to be in like a year or two. This, and I'm just like, constantly rallying myself up so i picked future because i'm constantly thinking of like what's next what's next like what am i what am i doing where am i going and just not chilling out yeah. i think i chose i chose future as well because i mean i do think about the past and then i get out of there but most times it's about what's going to happen next rather than what's happening now I have to be intentional about me now as in the present moment like right here not even right here tomorrow like right here right now each time for a it has, portion it has of to be them. like a conscious effort to realize that you're here right now doesn't it mm -hmm. yeah like, and to enjoy it like yeah. I have to be intentional <laughs> about enjoying it because sometimes it's just like you were just saying about you don't you feel sad and stuff like that and a lot of that sadness comes from the what if if this happened or if this happened or what going to happen if this takes place or if i spend this here or if i do this now what will happen rather than spend this here yeah. <laughs> and enjoy it now yeah because when i was going through my thing every day i was going to die tomorrow yeah that's what my mind was telling me like Mm -hmm. you know tomorrow you're gonna die <laughs> yeah. so when you notice what's happening and you acknowledge the present then you know that helps it so my thing is i had like mm -hmm. but in percentage wise i hardly think about the present because i would it would have to be a conscious effort to think about it the past maybe you know and then the future was the future is the most and that's i think that's the most problematic of the three because from the past you can learn things it, mm. you know that's that's history that you can study that and be able to maneuver going forward the present is always great because that's that's like bliss you know especially if you're in a good place you know but the future there's too many untolds there and, and that are just yeah. tied up so, i didn't answer this question i couldn't choose one i think sometimes it depends on where i am in my mood or in my week, in my day, I find that I'm able to spend some time in each zone. You know, there are some times when I'm very much in the present and just being free and enjoying whatever it is that I'm doing. 
And then there's sometimes when I'm hung up on the past and maybe sometimes it's reminiscent or sometimes it's mourning or sometimes it's like just looking back and appreciating a time that maybe I didn't appreciate at the time. You know, that kind of, it kind of just gets stuck in some moments like, damn, that was good and I didn't really enjoy it. But I find like I kind of go in between each because sometimes I'm thinking about the future and I'm planning and like, I need to do this to do this and I need to do this to do that. But I would say I try not to get stuck anyway. And that took a lot because I used to be obsessed with the future and like what, and the what past, made, what, what but made, never the present. What was, what was what was the most common factor of being obsessed with the future? Like, what did, what um, did I was you thinking about this? my mortality. Yeah, I was thinking about death. I was thinking about my death. I used to be really stuck on the past or stuck on the present. And no matter what happened in the present, <clears throat> the past always seemed better or the future always seemed better. But I somehow didn't appreciate whatever was happening at that time. Always in retrospect or like just, you know, daydreaming about potential, you know? But it took some time to like, to like, really sometimes I would ask myself what am I seeing what am I feeling what am I tasting what am I smelling and just to kind of just appreciate what is happening around me right now funny that you know the thought of death does hit the hits harder when you're having a good time like when you're about to go on a trip you go in Miami and then you jump on the plane like oh my god you know plane about to crash (laughs) in one time I step on a plane without thinking it's going to crash not one time (laughs) Oh no! Same. I experienced that too. I hate flying. I hate, hate it. it. I love flying. <gasps> no, I, my anxiety is like, let that plane yeah. shake once. Yeah. Once, yeah. I God mean, will be like, "Hey, girl, you inside for it." My strongest <laughs> prayers. My strongest prayers happen on a plane. Oh, right. it's always exactly. my strongest prayers happen on a boat. It could be on no, a no, Giselle. I could swim, I could float, but there is no way I could learn to fly. Somebody never. Fly. Somebody apparently hasn't experiences like swells of any kind because when December hit and you go in Caracol, Austria, and you see a wave up there, and then there's another wave oh, down no. there. And we went Caracol in December. Prepared yeah, to prepared to go if i see that wave that's it i lock off i done i off myself in my head and despite <laughs> all of that your chances of survival are still higher than falling from the sky and in, a from metal, the sky. in a metal cage i don't yeah. think about that that's not it for to me. be honest you know, y'all like, know my it falling will kill me <laughs> you know about my fears of the water so as soon as it becomes uncontrollable that's it i'm gone guys don't look for me you know <laughs> I think oh, my prayers were definitely stronger on Osprey when we went to Caracol. That's it. Listen, because we <laughs> remember we, we came up in the morning, and yours and we in came the up in the sky, day. and it was bad. <laughs> Me and Amy hang on to each other. I she just has she headphones in the night. I low key crying and praying. <laughs> the the Pentecostal and me came out. Listen, <laughs> listen, you know you don't know the horror of like I don't know what to think, what to do with myself when. You're going up on the Osprey. Two of them was like back and forth with two buckets, like shoveling water out of the boat, out of the Osprey. I like, nah, bro. Nah. Excuse? And the boat is like this, you know, doing the, you know, the cha cha slide. That was crazy. <laughs> that was, that was, that was. I'm weak. Mm. Yeah, no, that yeah. would have. I would have been like, let me tell you something. Just drop one. Just leave me in the water. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, see, and that's point. You can't leave me in the water. So you might as well drop this one in truth. And be like, my guys. But who did get back? Who did ever get back from the sea, though? Nee, no. Mm. Oh, what's, the guy, what's the guy from? What's the guy oh. from Mokana, huh? Who? From where? Omar? Yeah. They got who him did, back. Who did get back? What do you mean? We got Rose. Jack died, but you know, so many people survived. We didn't want Rose. <laughs> we didn't want Rose. We didn't want Rose. <laughs> Rose is selfish as hell. We don't like her. <laughs> Nonsense. Yeah. We didn't people, want Rose. These people are survive plane crashes, man. They just from way. Who? 
Yeah. No, Denzel Washington when he was drunk and he landed the plane. That was a movie. Based on true events. Yeah. Yeah. Come yeah. for me. To be fair, the captain man that landed in the river. Right. Was not true. Yes, 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 yes. You just, yes, yes, do, yes. You just yes. have to hold on to like some debris or something and the debris is going to slow your fall. And you know, hope you land on a tree because the branch is gonna break break your fall and your not me air gliding through the <laughs> on, a, on a wing. I will put my wings. Listen. On the wings of love. <laughs> I love it. I, like I love song. it. So yeah, you know, carnival? Any any one of y'all? Not this year. No. Next year. Trinidad, Trinidad, tie all up by and I know for one for sure, like she was all over the place. Like, oh. I yeah. have a time. <laughs> I love that. We next year. Mm. I feel we should, you know. Yeah. Be but nice. if the if if the if the if the water low rough, I ain't going nowhere. And God forbid they make me go well, on that plane yourself. when they had a whale. No, because you want to go on the seven seater plane? No, because they had a oh, whale, no. and they go watch me and be like, "Ma'am, please." Be on the scale, and I would have to be disrespectful because don't ask me on no scale because I don't know my weight. I don't want to know. I don't want they to weigh it to get on the small plane. Yes, babe, uh, because they can't go. Bye. <laughs> I used to wear, by the way. So they wear your bag, they wear you so that they know they because they, they can't afford for the waiting to be off. Nah, they only I'm have going to get disrespected. I would you, roll. I'm not going to get disrespected. Yeah, no, I don't want to be disrespected. Sorry. Bye. I don't want to know my weight. I don't want you to know my weight either. Or tell me that I can't get on the plane because of. I don't know if they do that anymore. They're more likely to tell it to take it back. There's a hand raise. Hey, catch on. But what if, what if, like your weight is perceived to be a good thing by 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 people? (sighs) Not when you're on the class plane. They go tell my big ass. Oh, maybe 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 circumstantially, yeah, the outcome could be. (laughs) Oh yeah, other ways I'm happy with my body and when it comes to like Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not but I don't want to no... get on the air, the air, plane, yeah, you know, plane. On the airport scale. <laughs> Given your weight. And if you're still in season weight, man, it's over that. I tell you what my weight is. I identify as that. <laughs> you know in the Caribbean ask for your weight, right? When you when you like book a flight with Inter Caribbean, you have to put oh. your weight. That's crazy. And that I just lie. I just lie. I lie. I don't care. <laughs> Listen, that is crazy. I re- I go with my last weight that I remember and then add a few based on how much KFC I had that between mm. them. And- Have we gone to the next question? Maybe. Yes, we can. All right. Yeah. So these were the open-ended questions we asked them. So we got quite a few answers. Some really funny ones, actually. I, so- also did not re- I didn't look at the answers this time again so that my resp- my reaction could be organic remember that word guys organic love oh my organic. god triggered stop it sorry <laughs> all right so what are some of your high points of being an adult so our listeners did answer these we have some very good ones doing what i want when i want someone wrote honestly wearing matchy panty and bra sets <laughs> and then another answer followed up by up you Actually, not giving a fuck when appropriate because me run things, things not run me. Yeah, yeah. No. Cool. I didn't even know who said that, but I got it. it had to be Ayana. <laughs> Big man. What did I say? Was that you? <clears throat> I have to be honest, that was a little bit of um, I'm not good at multitasking. We know. We, yeah, we, we know. know. It's okay. We're okay. talking about been. things not run you. Oh, yes, right. things that run me. That was me. Being, oh, yeah. How was being, being more in tune with myself, my wants and needs. Love that for you. Nobody that can tell Who me that? that was you, Ro. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, look at you. Uh, Love that for you. And then somebody she put. She doesn't remember. Uh, and then someone wrote, "Nobody can tell me what the fuck to do, bitch." That, was like, that sounds like Giselle. Yeah. <laughs> and then someone just used a bunch of emojis to answer. So they have like the devil emoji, pills, guitar. Oh, so devil emoji. To, they pills could and guitar. Yeah, basically they're just saying like they could do whatever they want, essentially. Right? No, sex, drugs, and music. It should be sex. And there's weed. I'm gonna assume oh, that's oh. weed as well. 
drugs, so, yeah. It's like drugs and music, yeah. Yeah. Big up you. Big up you. Oh, and man. look at you, Rohan, being the decipher here. She's a so your high point of my, age, my age starts to show. <laughs> All right. Influence on me. So, I guess, do y'all want to add to your high points? Or we, me and Sandman, will just add ours. To what? To if what you are your high points? Your no, I get My high it. points of being an adult? Mm-hmm. Oh, I I answered that. Can I? You're can asking I, if you want to. Well, I was going to ask if you want to add more. No, no, no. I answered, I answered twice is what I'm saying. But she didn't say the last one. So I could say it. Oh, okay. Yeah, you say it. It's a, is that the one that you sent yeah. to the message? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I felt as a woman, and y'all could tell me if y'all got to a point in your life where once you panty and your bra matching consistently, you feel like you made it out no, of you... that bitch. Yep. <laughs> consistently yep. wearing matching panty and bra sets <laughs> was like, look when you at even me, wear a, bra. a woman yep. of the world. Mm-hmm. It's like, I have a plan. And the plan is, is to be together. To I'm organized. Matches. I like, I didn't wear my Monday like, underwear like with my like Wednesday. All <laughs> he's like he's all asking all the time? More often than not. At least on a Friday night. So I mean, on a Friday night, we don't wear Rohan. Okay. <laughs> Sandman, you want to talk about your high points of being an adult? This is, this is interesting. Your bras and panties much? I think Sam, I want to go out on a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> with all of you. <laughs> He's like, wait, I hang out with the wrong crew. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Speechless. So, so my like two of two of my high points. It's it's um one of them I two. I think it's you know, if I embark upon discussing it, it gets too graphic. So I want to leave that one out. But um Save that for the After Dark podcast. Yeah, yeah. Should we pause? Wink. So, um, <laughs> Not the wink. Don't tell me what to do. Mm-hmm. The, the next thing is um, there's this there's this um, when you really want something and you tell your mind that it's going to come to fruition and if you do it enough that it actually does come true. That's happened to me on numerous occasions. I just, I just thought, wow, like something that you never thought you'd achieve or accomplish. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's always been something that you always wanted. It just shows that you know, if you know, there are no boundaries to, you know, attaining what you really want. I mean, you know, wherever physically or or, or mentally possible. A lot of people, you know, have dreams about things. That's why people could. <clears throat> make songs about having dreams, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, people relate because everyone has things they want or things they want to be or things they want to do. And I just knew that I didn't know. I didn't know at all. But on several occasions, like several, too many to mention when I said, that's going to happen. I don't know how. I don't know when. You know, I'm generally a patient person. I don't really laid back. I don't they stress me out, but it usually comes to fruition, man. Like, that's it's crazy. I can't even begin. I don't even want to list what they are because some of them, some of them, you know, <laughs> I still can't believe it up to this day. Next. I would say what for me, say? there is a few some are related to like financial aspects and some are related to like my own growth and yeah. It's crazy. So like when I think about high points, like I yes, that is up there and like being able to like make my own decisions. But I think even that took me a while. And what I mean by that is like I was always like, oh, let me get a couple of opinions at first because sometimes I didn't trust, you know, not fully trust the decision I was going to make. So like actually being in a good place of being like, I got this, I can make it. And like and getting to a place I was really proud of myself that I could do that other aspects when it's been to financial. So like when I think about financial impact in my life and when I also think about financial legacy, so like building financial legacy, like for future generations, it's actually a very big conversation that I have with my brothers. I also have with my husband of like 
making sure that we have a foundation that we set down to kind of propel things for, not only for us in the future for but but for those that come after us so like big goals for me were like setting Where up that truck go ahead oh i just want to ask you like yeah like how important is the latter that you discussed like the actual legacy aspect the like not opposed to like yolo what everyone is about now but like were you always one to consider the you know the legacy that you leave behind or is it something that you know manifested over time during the course of your life i would say so this comes apart a little bit of like from growing up so like in our family it, we were never in a, in a place where we were like we were super poor but we were always in a place where we kind of always kind of played catch up right like we're always catching up to the next paycheck or anything like that and as we grew older i think a lot of this comes with financial education right and i know we'll we'll have like a full topic about that in another episode but for me when i was younger i was definitely like fudge got a really big paycheck right and at that time when i really big paycheck to me was i was working at a juice bar and i was getting like $500 US every two weeks, right? And I would just go and spend it on shopping and so forth. But as I got older, and especially with me living in the States where things like, and I'm sure that's actually relevant in anywhere else too, like credit is very big, right? You don't have any credit here. You really can't do anything in this country. Um, so when I say legacy, I'm actually saying like, not a scenario where like, you know, my kids and like my future, you know, grandchildren and so forth will just always have like, you know, mommy, daddy money to go back on, but being able to understand like what, how finance actually impacts them. There's a little bit of, they could fall back on, but making sure that like we, as again, if I talk about me and my husband, that we have the education that we need. So that as we move forward into creating a family and as those get bigger, that like we can be in an area that we also are advising on different financial aspects of as well. I'm 38 now. So I, I would be lying if I said I never had a YOLO moment. Um, <laughs> I've definitely have, and I've definitely been like, shit, I shouldn't have dipped into my savings where I'm now in a place where I have investment accounts set up. I have a retirement account. I have life insurance. Like I'm in a place right now. And this is my really high point is that like, I've set myself up in a scenario where like, I really don't have to worry if I were to not be here tomorrow. Right. Where I know that like my my parents would still be taken care of. Right. Like my husband would be taken care of and and vice versa. So like building those connections. But then, as we said, like for future as kids come, like if there's ever a time where I would leave earlier than, you know, or maybe not earlier, maybe when you leave is actually when you're supposed to leave. Right. So like knowing that people are in a good place. And not having to, I have a fear of like, I never want to be in a place of debt. So what that means to a company, whether that means to people, because I would not want anyone else to take on my debt as well. Did that answer your question, Simon? Very much. Yeah. So, <laughs> and I, then that's my highlight. And I think like, um, Jans, if you remember for your birthday back in, <laughs> when I came to Grenada, let's say two years ago, these girls still blame me for it. But when I came to Grenada two years ago, <laughs> uh, we were all having a conversation, right? Where like, it, it felt in that moment, it felt to be in such a good space of like, we love to spoil each other. And when we mm -hmm. can, every one of us has done it for each other, right? No matter what type of financial background. And it was such a good place to be in, to be like, I didn't have to check something in order to see if I could do it. Right. Yeah. Or, and that stems from like one financial backing, but that also meant like, Hey, I have the friends around me who like, I know if I didn't have it today, my friends got me. And that Always. is such a good, like, I just got tingles. Oh, that is such <laughs> a good fucking feeling. Right. Knowing that like, you got it, of course, but the circle mm -hmm. that you're in, and that's a very big, I believe it's a big part of adulthood, but the circle mm -hmm. that you're in has got you when you don't got yourself. God damn, I can't relate to that. I'm, 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 <laughs> oh, but that doesn't have that to be for that. financial. That doesn't have to be for financial. Mm -hmm. no, that no, could no, be no, emotional no, support no, too, no, yeah. No, 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 not even 
financially. Yeah. yeah. Me with people, like, because me with people, I, you know, I don't, I don't trust people like like that easily. Yeah. Okay. So it's my understandable. Circle is, my circle is like a dart. Really. On a hook? So, like, you know, what'd you say? Yourself. Would you like a hug? Is what I'm I'm offering you a hug. I'm hugging myself. Sure. You don't see that? So that is why it's a dot. <laughs> <laughs> I offered you a hug at a girl. So I'm oh. hugging myself. Oh. I just said it's, it's a dot. Did you understand? Wow. <laughs> so um, you know, I can't relate to it. Um, and um, you know, you feeling so good about something like that this is something that like, okay, I had to put myself in a position into feeling good about something like that because I ain't got nobody I could fall, fall back on. There's no one. Uh -huh. there's, there's no there's no one that I, I don't think there's anyone that I fully, there's people, you know, of course, that are, you know, that are, that, that, you know, you know, let me be fair. It's a couple of people. It's a couple of people. So I would draw that to a degree. But, I don't, know, I don't know if it's a man thing or whatever, you know, it's a pride, ego, whatever. I don't know. I, I might dig it up, you know, when I'm by myself and try to answer it. But for now, now that it's, that's, that's thought that's, you know, slapped me in the face, that's what jumped out of my mouth because, you know, I guess it must be a good feeling. So, you know, I'm happy for you with that. Thank you. We have a good group of friends here. Yeah. We and it wasn't always like that, I will tell you. So that's like if I could share mm -hmm. anything that with you, like just because it's not like that now doesn't mean it can't be like that later. Yeah. Also, oh, you could join our friend group, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we nice. We nice. Yeah, remember, remember how I, <laughs> I stumbled upon your friend group when, when I went to deliver cheesecakes to um 360? I just yeah, there you go. And I, just, I know it was bad. It. We was bashing man. That's we were bad talking men, like oh, you know, was on, bashing man. Oh, he was came, on a level that day. I came to, you know, we ain't so bad. Like everybody you know so bad. No, it's true. But the thing is that 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 stumble upon was literally us being friends again. Me coming from somewhere, Ro being in limbo waiting. I'm saying I'm a meter. Ayana on her way home. Bitches, y'all didn't invite me. No, it was a uh, it was a thing. So she came too. That's literally how we are. Like always, if somebody want to do something, just pick you up. You have to phone justify and... not inviting me. Um, just, 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 oh. <laughs> I was just I just happened by. Okay, it's fine. It's cool. But you know, the happenings, the happenings yeah. happen that we're here right now too. So and look like at you happening, so happening. Mm -hmm. being a celebrity okay, on, on our podcast, podcast. Mm -hmm. look at you you're I'm basically about. part of the friend group i am about the celebrity thing i don't listen i don't consider myself to be that right that's, okay that's, that's you we do, do. <laughs> and as you we do that's you oh, you don't have to consider yourself okay all right, all your business. i'd really like your autograph next time <laughs> I really want to hear the story about Winkai Solfish, but we'll talk about it after. Okay. Um, <clears throat> All right. What's next the next one? question? <laughs> so the next question was, of... what are some of your low points of being an adult? So people have said, uh, realization that my life is what I make it, and also the struggle of friend making. Mm. Forgetting to pay my water bill. That is Ayana. That is Ayana. That is Ayana. Gotta be. That is Ayana. <laughs> Followed by bills, bills, and motherfucking bills. Anxiety, right, depression, stress, lack of support, community, and partners. Mm -hmm. Making my own doctor's appointment. You say you're kidding, but I know you're not. Um, I'm not. I'm not kidding. <laughs> not, not, kidding being not being prepared for. Not being prepared for a rainy day. Mm. Uh, next one. Nobody's telling me what the fuck to do. Seriously, managing all the things. Yeah, that was me because there's nobody to tell me what the fuck to do so I can live my life. But then when it comes to just uh, do this, there's nobody to tell me to do that either. So. You also <laughs> don't listen the to last... nobody. <laughs> that, listen that, exactly. That, that. She don't listen, she don't hear. No, and no. Then the last one on that one was paying rent and doing laundry. That's the worst. Well, all y'all for that, for all a woman needs is 
a sugar daddy and a washer dryer. I huh? agree. Huh? That first part, the washer dryer, definitely. But that first part, boy, like That's a splendor right. daddy, because you don't want him to want the sugar. You just want him to want the, the idea of sugar. That's stevia. We have no stevia daddy. Come to mind. <laughs> so you that geriatric? You know, Probably. when I dream this dream, I would like to imagine that, you know, my sugar daddy is sugary. And you know what? If you get a sugar daddy that you like, could you even buy That's it? That's nice. That could be a husband. Yeah, yeah. But guess what? Yeah, everybody like, like you, everybody though, like right? everybody like sugar. Everybody like a little sugar. I like savory stuff. That's your pro that's a problem right there. Everybody yeah, like, you like salt. Huh? We like salt. Yeah, but everybody likes like sugar. It, yeah, that's, yeah. that's why that's why you need to get some ugly guy like me because when you're going after all the handsome guys first of all sandman first of all first, there first, of, all, no, first of all there first of all there will be no self-deterioration here first of all also I'm talking facts. all red man all red man does do is lie <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> lie 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 you don't need to go no no i'm dropping gems right now because when you're going after all the <laughs> All the guys. Because they fake. Because Sandman. Let him finish. Let him finish. Continue. When y'all go after all the pretty guys, right? That all them girl and them one, you know, in time. I mean, it's true. It's true. Somebody did tell me. Yeah, yeah. Because like, your man your 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 you one that like you know the perfect you know look you, the guy has to look good. But well, guess what? You know them the mother girls like good looking guys too. Yeah. So, well, I also yeah. I like pretty things. Eh? So that. Mm. Huh. You like pretty things. I mean, actually, let me take that back. Yeah, that's. You know, I like stable things. Right. That. So, do they? They have to Almost be pretty. Stable. They have to. They have to have a polish or sheen to it. Uh, I don't know. I feel like looks can change. Stainless steel is pretty stable. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There you go. There you go. That's true. That's true. I just, just, just because he just because he said spot um, polish and a sheen, sheen and a sheen. sheen yeah 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 catch you yeah all right what I so stuck on the fact huh. no because oh, yeah. before you continue I stuck on the fact that you tried to call yourself ugly I know you're very yeah. good you didn't want to say you didn't want to say I had to make cheesecake to get girl. But that's what I didn't understand that because I feel like that'll make sense. You don't know that's what man does lie. On God, like, that man does lie. The man say on oh, God, yes. Don't ask anybody, no, don't ask anybody that went, that, that went to school with me. I, you didn't have a listen, bed. Listen, my husband read man too, huh? so I know red man does lie sometimes. Yeah. You didn't have a bed. That's that's where it is. Beard. You see? Yeah, boy. Like yeah. a beard. Put your mirror up here. That's a problem. That's a problem. I never cut my beard again. I, watch me. Let me tell you. Let me give you a joke. Let me give you a joke. Uh, my yeah, last that's relationship. That's just childish. Like, my last that? relationship. No, my last relationship was like, you know, we was there. We was good for a while. You know, I, I don't know if she watching. Hi. But. Um, hey, you. Friend. <laughs> hey, girl. Uh, tell up to yourself. So, you know, one day I cut the beard, you know. <laughs> you like. Oh. Yeah. Don't. You haven't punished. Don't. Go back and get it. Go, yeah, go, back, go, go back and get it. Right. I literally no, 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 tell no. Daryl one time, go back I could and glue literally, it on. I could literally yeah. see in her eyes, like her considering like breaking up, breaking up with me. I, I could see it. I could Is see that it. what she got with? You changed up on her. That's okay. I understand that. So there's some time passed right. and then she's like, ah, I love her still. <laughs> but <laughs> She had to but, think about it, huh? But she had to think about it. That's exactly what it was. She had to think about it. Listen, yeah. I don't understand. Men really have underestimated the effect of a beard. And I got with Daryl when Daryl was clean shaven. Throughout our relationship, Daryl got the beard. This man decided to be like, I need a break. Ugh, I'm going to shave it off. He shaved it off and I was shocked. So even from a person that got with a person that was clean shaven, went to a beard and he shaved again, I have literally told him, I was like, don't ever do that again. I will. I can't. I cannot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what she said to me as well. You know, and every time I think about shaving the beard, I think about 
Drake versus No versus Drake back in YMCMB. Oh like, yeah. I'm gonna ask your role friend right here. <laughs> Let me tell you, that man looked like Sid the Sloth. And the thing about like, like the Sloth, right? the Sloth back is, then. Yeah. The mm. niggas still look like that Sid now. The Sloth. But he's sexy as hell with that hair. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So we can't cut a bit. No. No. Yeah. I agree. It's prosthetic. <laughs> He, he, just did a very, have a he just did a very bad man thing. I don't know if it's a bad man thing or a red man thing, he but he this. just did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah he also he just did the fly hands. hands. Yeah. He, he also did the fly did hands. Forward. The uh-huh. bird man hands. That's when you get the oil for the beard, you know. You, you uh-huh. the oil. The oil? And you apply. That's how it is. That's, that's Okay. Yeah. My thing is, if I if I dare to a man and you're deciding to cut your locks, that's like the bad thing. That would be very me. traumatic for me. That would be a traumatic, traumatic experience. I think I'll cry. I probably would too. Yeah. I might also have off. to leave, leave him. him eh? leave, Just out of him? out of principle, I might. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> them wow. girls and them like locks, man. They like they like rats, man. Wow. So if you take that away, then you're just a man. Wow. Anyway, want that. He's and like, not, oh, that I, not that I wouldn't date a bald head. Eh? It's just that if I am with you and you are a man and you cut your hair. But you can't sew back. <laughs> You're <a> crochet. <laughs> wow. That's cool. That is disrespect. That's cool. Why? 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 Because <laughs> if he sew it back now, again, out of principle, I have to leave him. <laughs> she said I have to leave him. Because no, why you have I just so want to <laughs> say that I do not share all Ayana's sentiments. I, I try to figure out why. I, I want you to know why. I need to know why. Why? Because she have a problem. <laughs> Ayana has no Giselle. I don't want you I, I want Ayana answer. Why why you gotta leave him the two times? I can't say this, you wow. know, because it's okay. You can because the disclaimer was this is a no pose bad conversation. Let's go. I know, but this is very ignorant of me, honestly. That's fine. That's fine. I I did the whole um, you know, the Vietnamese Chinese joke thing, and you all laughed about it. It wasn't even a joke. I was twice, twice no. Twice. <laughs> I, you know, that shit. You all laugh. So it's my turn. It's our turn now. Come on, talk, talk, it, talk, talk the things. Uh, I love people. Like my, my favorite would she fall off the person. chair or? I think she just went too far into the into the background. Oh, okay. oh she froze. Oh, my, favorite, froze my favorite like my biggest crush was the lady on Golden Child. If you ever saw that movie, um with Eddie Murphy. Yes. That's, that's yeah. Movie. That's the first movie person I fell in love. She's gorgeous. She her eyes like this. So you know nothing. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Sorry, killing me today. Okay, Yans, are you there? Yans, are you answering the question? Oh, I thought we had a no. Okay, um, so why would I leave Rasaman after he cut his hair? Um, for the similar reasons with the beard, you know, if I like Rasaman, I like Rasaman, and if you cut your hair, then you're no longer Rasaman, and sometimes. The person underneath the hair or the beard is not, that's not the face that you signed up for. And not that you were done for the face either. It's just really, it changes so much. So um, you're saying, you saying, what you're saying essentially, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to get to something after this. I'm going to revert to something after that, that you are a superficial lover. You know... I'll take that because there is something that draws me in in the beginning and I have to be honest about yeah, that. And there is something that draws all of us in in the beginning. And then I hope that underneath whatever it is that draws me in at first, I find some substance mm-hmm. and sometimes I don't and I move away. But there is it's something fine. superficial fine. about how everybody meets somebody. Because look, in nature, uh, in, in nature, the bird with the, the prettiest feathers that does a little dancey dance and shows all the feathers. That's what gets the attention of the other birds, you know? And funny enough, that is not what would get my attention. The no, little no, bird with the dancey dance. No, 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 that's fun. That's fine. But like, it's it, it all equates to the same thing. The laws of attraction is primarily physical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Almost it's always like a... initial. Almost mm-hmm. all, always. Oh, I see that. Oh, huh. I like your personality. 
No, that's not how it is. You need to buy and like my person. That's not how we say it. In the community, we say, I like your energy. Right. I'm signing out. Be- <laughs> <laughs> Take me out of here. <laughs> Take me out of here. <laughs> so me going me going into that, like, me going into that, I, I, I always say, well, you know, some people will always be in trouble with relationships because the attraction is, you know, basically superficial and there is elevated competition for that and based on the culture that the recipient of your affection is that lies in you know then it could only be devastation if not devastation it would always be it will always be more difficult for you um based on the culture that you know that person is if it's a grenade in a well you're doomed you understand if they back well you you know, it might be doomed too. Because <clears throat> I mean, I'm saying this to say, and it's not because of what I'm drinking, because our culture is like we if I come out to be a, with a song about Jesus Christ, I'm like, oh sound man from Christ. Okay, nice. Next. But let me come out to the horn tune. Let me come out to the horn tune with the on that, on that, that pumping, that getting ready, that getting beat. So that means that's us. That's where we are. That's where we are mentally, you know. And we praise that. We 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 relish in that. You know, kick kick is all fun and give away get one or take that. Not and stay quiet. Not pay, not paying attention to all of the people. We don't talk about all the other things that you know. The all all the other nasties that circulate beneath. Okay. You understand, and it's a lot that we don't speak about. It's and it's scary. And we sit on and think about it every once in a while. You know, watch a clip or listen to someone speaking like, "Oh, that's scary as hell." But kick, 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 that person get one. And that's <laughs> mm-hmm. that's I mean, that's that's how I talk about my horn. Right. <laughs> I just kick, 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 all day, every day. That's we call. That's our culture, right? So if I am a know that living here. That been exposed to this all my life, all my growing life, and I don't have proper guidance, like a father or a family, a strong family that is there to to guide me and say, no, this is wrong. Even if they do that, I can do it still because I want to see, I want to see what it's about because I'm curious. Like I fucking do it still. However, chances are I may revert and say, okay, well maybe I shouldn't do this. But that's not the case here. So, you know, you can look for your Grenadian Prince Charm and all the one. You know, it's going to be difficult to obtain. Probably have lots. Yes. Just saying. Yeah. You need, you need to get an ugly nigga like me. Again. some ugly men. Huh? They have ugly man with locks too. And then well, they're the, the beautiful ones. The locks just change everything. Like, the locks just make us... Listen. No, no. But if you are a man and you are listening... Locks will not solve your problems. No, no, locks it won't uh, because you need to know what kind of wine you like. Just say, listen, sweet Giselle, Giselle, Giselle. Just get a mop and put it over your head so and see if it will look good with locks or not. <laughs> you girls go like it. B, please, please help us steer the conversation back. Okay, let me go. Because... <laughs> All right, oh, and, God. so do you oh, have? <laughs> So the question came back to, I think Sandman and I still needed to answer. So what it is, the question was, <laughs> what are some of your low points of being an adult? Okay, well, anxiety was one, definitely. That was terrible. Like, you know, thinking I was going to, not having control of yourself. Mm-hmm. Thinking, you know, you know, however short it was, it was, it was very short. And, you know, Everyone goes, a lot of people experience it, you know, to the to oh, different people. Me. You know, thinking like, you know, what if you end up in the, in, in the crazy house and you come out walking like a robot or something like that. And, you know, that actually, that was, that, there's, there was nothing worse than that, bro. Zero. The, prior to that, there was a time, you know, like a condom popped. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm going to die. <laughs> um, you know but you tie up that yeah. you, you, you just sort of that easy you know you just wait a couple months you go by the doctor and you take a test you know and you 
is the fresh and clean and you know that's gone that's 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 that's, that's done we but, survived uh, yeah <laughs> we, <so. laughs> we um, made it <laughs> but um i can tell you this though like being broke is a hell of a thing boy like being broke is a hell of a thing boy. that that as a as a I, I, I can't even say as a man. I remember that. I was about to say, don't say as a man because no, it's no, not no. fun for anybody. Yeah, right. yeah. It's not. It's not. Because like there was a time when like shit was coming at you at once and you need to find this and do that and do that and do that. And I was working in a bank and everything. And you know, not for once I did thought about stealing. You know, I just want to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know. No, it did not once did I think of taking the people's money ever, right? Because, you know, you're working there and money, money is like work. When you see money, you see work like, bleh, you don't want it like that. You want it as figures on the screen. That's what you need. That's how you need it. But um, it was, it was like, at one point it was tough, man. Of course I got out of it, you know. I never want to. I never want. We never want to have to go through that again. Yeah. Therefore, I never want to depend on anyone. Therefore, I don't keep many people around me. Therefore, I try to do everything by myself. Like you know, I was I was supposed to build a studio. I was supposed to build a studio. I I got a quote for, from someone. I was like, oh, two thousand dollars. Like, okay, material included. Nah, nah, that's just for the work. Say nah, man. You know, the next day I came home from work and you know I did I, I did everything by myself. You know, and nothing feel greater than that. And I don't know if that's good or if it's bad because it's just me telling myself that I don't need nobody. But guess what? I need we man is a social animal. We we need each other. Yes, so how can I help you? I just wanted to say that I have been there. I get there a lot of the time. They know that. Because when I go through anything, I just shut the fuck down. But it's because of them that I had to accept. Because they're not the type of people to allow that for too long. You know, they would allow your space and stuff. But because they know me so well, they don't allow me to get to that space of, I don't need nobody. I don't want to be around nobody. I just do everything by myself. They don't allow that. And I had to accept that in a very big way. And so it's not... Them? A... I, I confused. What do you mean? What is it then? Us, us them. them, these girls here. <laughs> and the, the, oh, okay, okay, okay. The, okay, remain, okay, okay, okay. the remainder of the group, they just, they don't allow that. And it's because we've been through so many experiences together that we have we kind of able to identify those things, and we just kind of have to accept it. B is not going to hear it. She's not going mm -hmm. to hear it. She's not going to hear it. You don't have the money, okay, bitch? I didn't ask you that. I didn't ask you that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't ask you that. And we've come to a, a space where it's like that. I mean, even on the weekend celebrating Ayana's birthday, um. Things went differently um, than we planned because we, we know that where we were going was a, a particular price and then the price went up as things tend to do. And so she's like, guys, I understand. And everybody was like, I don't think anybody even bothered to answer. Everybody was like, okay, we're still okay. <laughs> we still good. Don't ask me to go nowhere else. She's like, <laughs> she's like, no, it's okay. I understand. And, you know, so it's like I have been there and I still get there at certain points. But I'm very glad, again, for the supportive people that I have around. Because they don't want to hear. They don't want to hear that shit. And we don't want to hear it from each other. I remember when we used to go up to rehearsals in St. Paul's all the time. Rohan. I don't have gas. I don't. I didn't ask you that. <laughs> like, I didn't you ask you that. Like, me up, boy. Yeah, I didn't ask you that. Like, were we eating after? Well, I don't have... I didn't ask you that. Like, oh, were we eating after? So much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It pisses us off when you do it to it. I know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Good. But yeah. Bloody don't worry. My sound man will be your friends like that. Mm -hmm. We got you, boo. Sometimes I try to hide it from them as much as I can. But we're all in group chats. Like, we're all in several group chats together. 
So it's like I will try to hide something, but like something somebody would know something's off. Is it tone? To my guts is a yeah. tone. Is it like, tone? You can't relate to that because men we we deal differently when it comes to that. Yeah, yeah. I think they have that bravado, like, that I, respect my, for. We, we have a group chat with a bunch of guys. We we playing Call of Duty and thinking me and my boys and them, and then now, you know, if somebody stopped talking a while, you know, John might say. Hey, Baizy, you don't talk in a while, you're a pussy. Huh? <laughs> Yo, I'm going to send it to you, bro, next time. <laughs> do it, bitch. Do it. Do it. Let's go. Next line in the group chat. What? <laughs> I said that's going to be my next line for anybody that gets yeah, quiet. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's how, I guess that's how they're really saying, I love you. That's how the guys is. That's how guys would say, you know, what, yeah. going, on, what going on with you. Right? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe you really asking the guy if he's a pussy. Yeah. Um, no, I think he he genuinely thinks that because I saw John on Saturday night and yeah. he he described everybody. He was like, G, Peck is a P U S S Y. Hold on. Excuse, <laughs> Did he really? excuse. Like, if anybody wants to screenshot this, like, take a video moment of this Giselle, I'm going to look in the camera and I say, John. All right, we got three more questions to get through, y'all. So, this one was What was your aha moment that made you get your shit together or made you realize you needed to get your shit together? So, people said, Losing my job and going freelance. (laughs) Someone said, Them fucking bills. Another person said, Me anxious. I definitely don't have my shit together, but I tried hard. I try hard because not getting things doesn't make sense. Another person said, I, have- mean, I don't know what I say. Huh? <laughs> that Another mean? person said, We have those. Where the fuck is well, mine then? When I get to my lowest. Yeah. That was mine. That was yeah. Great. I didn't know we have I didn't know we have a uh-huh moment. And then someone said it's still loading. Anyone want to yeah. talk more on this? What they've shared? I don't remember I why I say it. And I don't find. I don't find it tight. So it came out like an intent. <clears throat> I am. Um, I definitely like. I, I've had moments where I realized that I had to pull myself together. Mm-hmm. But I can't say for sure that I know exactly when to get everything together because everything's still not together. I know that I want to have it, but, you know, I've had moments of, you know, pulling self together, but to see that aha moment, meaning you got to have everything all aligned. I, can't, I haven't gotten that yet. I hope I don't get it though, because I like the segmentation. I can get this part. I can, I can fix this on the side. I can fix this. Yeah. But anytime, I think for me, anytime I, I, I come to a realization that everything needs to be fixed all at once. I will have an anxiety attack or something like that. I appreciate the segmentation of where I am aware. Okay, money-wise, you, you need to get better. Okay, we work on that. Uh, job-wise, you need to get better. We work on that. Relationship-wise, you need to get better. Okay, we work on that. If everything comes together at the same time, boy, I don't know what will happen to me. Yeah, that aha moment would be a. <laughs> I agree with you, Jiz. I feel like same. I think it's been like the running theme now that it's just not like one moment. It's just gonna be like sometimes period over time. Like shit, I need to get this together. Um, I will say that I did have like I would call it like I think aha moment. I call it like my rock bottom moment specifically was. Um, and I think I've shared this with y'all before. So Simon, this will probably be new for you, but well, it is new for you. <laughs> so I remember when I got divorced years ago. So like going on 10 years now, longer, I think. And I think I've shared with y'all that I was like in directly went into this parting phase and I was just drinking way too much. And I was still living at home with mom and dad. And I remember just coming home, my rock bottom moment and I'm not proud of it, is that I drove home drunk, first of all. And driving home drunk is very different than driving home 
drunk in Grenada as in like you're not two minutes away right so like I drove home drunk and then I remember getting out of the car throwing up in my driveway right not cleaning it up and going upstairs throwing up on the carpet and going to bed only to wake up to my mom being like what the actual fuck (laughs) is wrong with you now and so like I think that was like okay, Bahar, you're going through some shit, but this is not the way to handle it. And you need to find a better outlet of like what you're doing. So like things are cutting back on the drinking, you know, um, I never let things kind of impact work, but I was like, obviously those slowly, those things slowly would impact other areas of your life. So like, that was like my aha moment of like, you need to get your shit together. Mm -hmm. Like you've kind of strayed off the path that you were doing well on. And now you've gotten back gone backwards a little bit and this is this is it so like that was definitely like rock bottom for me where i just needed to pick up shit and stop the fuckery i was doing at that point i'm a great drunk driver (laughs) (laughs) the man what was your aha moment moment that made you realize you needed to get your shit together Lots of questions still. I need to think about that. Okay. Yeah, and do you want to add anything? Um, my aha moment. Um, I think there's a certain point where, you know, you always know that you need to work hard to get what you want and sacrifice. But then there's like a certain point where you know that there's also a certain amount of luck involved. And then there's another point in life where you realize, okay, there is some luck but a lot of it is working hard and it just really kind of like washes over you how much you would need to do in order to reach where you want to go. Like if you really want to like, you know, get to accomplish those big dreams, big career dreams or big, like whatever it is, like how much work it takes and how much it just all depends on you and your willingness to do certain things like literally there's nobody else like you can't ask anybody else like it's just how much of your life just falls on you that like yeah i don't know when it happened i don't know if there was a moment it just like is a kind of maybe maybe with age or something you just it's just like yo my parents identify with that because you know at some point you just realize look my life is mine yeah i think it's all them stories that all the things that I've been through, everyone has their things that they went through as well. Yeah. So, but this is mine. This is my story. Yeah. Ain't nobody responsible yeah. for that but me. I so, think when it really sank in for me was when I saw my, when I first saw my aha moment was seeing my parents as humans, like seeing them as people, like just as like another woman just going through the same similar emotions that I'm going through the same kind of desires just at a different stage in her life like seeing her as a woman and realizing that she don't know what the fuck she's doing either and yeah. this pedestal that I held her up at and trying to be like just doing all these things to please my mom or doing all these things assuming that well she knows best and you know that kind of a blind conviction well my mommy said at the point at which you realize my mommy said means shit then you realize yo damn we all out here just figuring it out as we go that was like my moment where I'm like yo I need to help my mother in some ways she can still help me but like just seeing how yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. I, you know, I that I share the same sentiment with, with the same clauses, <clears throat> with the same parental figure. I could say that I don't need to repeat anything, but it's very similar. But um, as for my aha moment was, was that okay? So I came from. I remember, I remember being what my workplace was, um, kind of. Let me see if I want to talk about this boy. Let me see if it goes against the decoration as because no, it doesn't. Um so <laughs> everybody covered the head. Like I ain't gonna talk about that again because everybody covered it. <laughs> I ain't talking, I ain't, I ain't I ain't saying shit. But anyway, um I um like 
so I got I I went into to employment like at nineteen, like coming from school. So, I'm, so I basically developed while you know being at work, <clears throat> and it's only in hindsight that when you know when I look at kids now, um, I think like, oh my god, like you're so stupid. Why do why you're thinking like that when the world is like this? Like you're all retarded. But you know that was me <laughs> at that time. You know, that was me too. So at that point, I didn't know that. I was like, oh, you grown-up people, you don't know what you're talking about, you know, you alone, blah, blah, blah. So this is an organization organization that I would have, you know, developed um in and you know the 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 rebel in me, I guess, you know, so to speak, for lack of a better word. But I've gone into trouble, you know, quite some time. So so basically it was my place of employment and my place of growth. And you know. It's some, some kind of people that you know been in charge of me. Some with high tolerance, some with no tolerance, some indifferent. You know, you know. However, the power is distributed amongst them was. But anyway, to get to the meat of the matter, at, at times, you know, I would have felt, you know, victimized to a degree, right? And I couldn't understand it. And all I saw it as that woman wicked by. You know, still wicked. However, <laughs> there are valuable lessons that have been learned, and I can appreciate them throughout. Right, and <clears throat> I'm a, sorry, I'm at a stage right now where you know work and you know spirituality and everything combined, and that my aha moment was. Um, all right, I'm going to divert a bit, but not really divert. But my aha moment was kind of finding, finding peace, you know, within my surroundings there, you know, to, to just let go of, oh, this person fighting me or let go of why this is, you know, this is wrong. That person doing that and why it had to be so and that's wrong. And, you know, I focus on that and to just like, I just let just just let it go. To let go when you know your parents telling you I have to go to church and and every Sunday <clears throat> or you know you have to do this in a certain way to be a certain way. But then now I realize and, and my thing is that I've I'm observant, I listen, I I I I take in stuff. And where religion is concerned, particularly, some people ask me, Oh, you believe in God because of the kind of music you'll be making. Hell yeah, of course. Of course I believe in God. Like, I'd be stupid not to. Like, you know, look around. You know? The the plants out there taking farts and we didn't inhaling the plants' farts to live, you know? <laughs> you know? That's <laughs> something. You that's know, a good something, one. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, just say, like, it's... Yeah. You know, this is this is, this is is real. This is how we exist. You understand? So how, they, how could there not be a God? I subscribe to the one you believe in because there are several right now. You have to understand that there are several. There are several. And I, it was very confusing to me growing up. That's I was also a part of, you know, you know, that finding myself my aha moment, like religion, especially. When you come to say, okay, what's what's your religion? I say, oh, I'm religious. Oh, you believe in God? Of course. So how you know which God is? And say, well, I mean, all I can do is just go against, go with what I feel is right, deep within, and the act of meditation and prayer, you know, outreaching to who you believe created, you know, you benevolent, benevolently. Um, act, that's it. Because otherwise, you know, there's so many doctrines and so many things to follow with so many, so many different opinions. You get lost in that. And at that point, to be honest, that was let me tell you how many years I was about about seven years ago. And I realized, you know, you don't have to subscribe to certain things to feel good about yourself. You don't have to hold things against people. You don't have to, you know, feel bad that you're not in someone else's position. You don't have to. Is you just have to understand that you know, what's for you is for you. And all you have to do is just 
wish good on people that you would like people to wish on you and that changed my life like everything just started to open up when i started to think like that and it's weird i don't know if it's just you know a chance luck and chance because you know there's there's some of that involved in everything but at that very point everything just started to go right for me everything just started to go right for me like that is weird as hell and i can't i know, love that yeah. You even mentioned the law of attraction before, and I, I know you were speaking specifically about physical attraction, but <clears throat> just to know that you were putting that positivity out there, it was being directly reflected on you because your entire mindset changed. It did. It, is, did. Yeah. it did. And like, I thought like, like I was, I was, I thought I was a slow developer, you know, going through puberty, you know, slowly, you know, I, I started to, at 20 somebody years after I thought I was, you know, too much into video games. Giselle, you know that we used to be playing video games all the time. I'm still very much into video games. <laughs> okay. So um I don't have time for that now. <laughs> I wish I was. I wish I did. I wish I had time for it. But I had I don't. I don't. And um yeah, it's 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 a hell it's been a hell of a journey, man. I feel like you know, if I die today, I'm good. Hey, not many people can say that. No, not many people, that's for real. That's a, a, an amazing <clears throat> statement. No, oh, I love it. Yeah. All right, y'all. Let's... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Let's talk about home. <clears throat> what does home mean to you and how has it changed? How has it changed as you've changed over the years? There's no, this is, these weren't our internal questions. So this is for us. No listener answers. Home for me is, is where I am. <clears throat> because as everybody know by now, I am not from here. And I'm proud of that. That's one of my proudest things. Like I may not have certain <laughs> things at this age, but I live in a place independently. Um, that's not my, that's not my home country and I don't have family ties, you know, and all of that. And home is for me is wherever I am. <clears throat> so Ayana house is my home. Rohan house is my home. That last apartment B was in, that's my home. Home is wherever I am for home for me is where I feel safe and comfortable. And where I am, where I live right now, this is definitely home. I am very comfortable here. I wasn't that way. It wasn't like that initially. But over the years, as I got more comfortable with my singleness, is that a word? As a being a single, <laughs> as a being an single dumb individual, not having ties to somebody, not being with somebody, not living in their space with them, um, not thinking about if it could happen again, not trying to go somewhere else for that same kind of connection and kind of like developing what a Giselle space looks like. So my my apartment from when it started, which was bare nothing to now being littered with a bunch of random things, for example. Um, it's just, it's, it's very much myself now. There's toys all over the place because I'm a child. Uh, you know, it's just very me. <laughs> and I love that about my space. I made it every every year. It just becomes more me. And uh, it's not what you would expect our man house to be. But as I keep telling people, as a big man, you understand? And it's a comfortable space for me. And I love it, you know. The scent is beautiful, guys. You should come here and smell. It's beautiful. I have some of Ayana's candles. To kind of help with thoughts, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, my home has definitely changed over the years as I became more comfortable with myself as an individual. And uh, I don't think it could get any fuller. I know I could get fuller with myself, but I don't think I have the space, man, <laughs> for my home to become any fuller. But I'm very proud of the little space that I have, and I've become more open to it. Before time, and nobody couldn't come down here. And now, anytime anybody wants to pass, it pass. Not anybody, but you know, 
my friends and the select few. Mm. <laughs> I find I talk too much. I, I, I have a lot My... to say about it, but like, yeah. I this question. Well, will you bring you here to talk? Yeah, now? we bring you here. To yeah, talk. we really did not listen. I fed up him to talk. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll go first then. You can... Mine is very simple. My home is where I find peace within myself. And so I have a home with y'all. I have a home here with my family. I have a home in several homes in Canada like wherever I go and like I'm, I'm at peace I'm very like just relaxed that's home that's it for me yeah I would say the same I think if I think about like if we go from a st- structural aspect like I'm in a place where like where w- my home is like being with the people I love. So whether that means like, I love entertaining. So I, you know, having people over at our house um, and then also having the sense of that with others, like, bro, every time I've been at your place, y'all are always entertaining people. And like, I think that's one of the reasons why you and I are like so similar. Um, yeah. But then same thing with like everybody else of like, just as you said, well, people that give me peace were, like we talked about this on the epi- on our last episode of like not feeling anxiety around those that you're surrounded by. Um, so those are places that become home for me as well. So those things structural wise, I like I've created a space for myself at home where like I have a reading room and I'm, it's a room full of books and it's where I actually have set my office and it's really big and you know, it's, it's open space because I'm not, I realize I don't, I don't like walls (laughs) like it's weird enough to say that but I don't like walls I prefer big windows like areas where I know that I could kind of be amongst like sunlight greenery water as well which is why Grenada definitely feels like home to me because it's such a calming feeling I told her all the time I was like we're in the ghetto over here like we need to get back to Grenada not only because of like the people that we love but like just being so close to water has changed my mindset and also has changed like what I truly need in my life to even survive. So you don't appreciate water until a foreigner tells you about it. <laughs> People be like, no, we don't go to the beach that much. I'm like, what? And so like when I went to Grenada last time too, I just made sure like whichever place I rented that I at least had a view of the mountains, which we had, which I had over there up by um Oh my god, I can't remember the roundabout now. My bad. But anyway, okay. before we uh Marasu. Yeah, thank you. Um so, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. B when she was here not too long ago. No, the last B. time. Yeah. Too long yeah. ago. B's my neighbor then. <laughs> yeah. neighbor. Actually, yes, like right there. Yeah. Right there, right there. Well, um okay. okay. Well, I just I've been coming to grips with uh, the term home for a while because where I've been staying, where I've been, ex- you know, existing, was very work related. Right, you wake up, you go, you see a studio set up there, you know, so you get up, you go to work, be able to get out of the place, you come back in music. Recently, no, it's that plus a kitchen where you know I bake cakes almost every day, mm-hmm. so it began to get kind of claustrophobic mentally where um, you're just waking up and you're just seeing your office. Right? So I had to get away from that for a while. It was very necessary for me to do that because it didn't feel like a home. I, you know, and being an introvert who appreciates views and quiet, um, I ended up in on Lucas Street in like the best apartment complex in the world, owned by Lovnish and Rishi and their father. That's Kanani, a good one. Guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome place, man. It was just like the perfect setting. It was close to home. Like, so, so here, like, here's the office now. I come here to work. Music bang, 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 mm-hmm. do kicks, you know, whip, 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 whip. And I go there and it's quiet. And you could just lean back on the porch and then, you know, bomb a zoo in peace. You know? I love that. Yes. <clears throat> you know, that 
And it's not, it wasn't even my place, you understand? But it felt that was home. So home is, is in the mind, actually. So to be honest, you know, I'm on the way to finding home. Um, I'm on this, it's a, it's a journey right now um, that I'm currently on. Because, you know, where I work isn't home, it's not. I live here, I grew up here. But, you know, all, all of that, but it's not home. So I guess it's like, you know, like you hit puberty at 13 or 12 or 13. And then, you know, you, you know, you, you know, you start to get muscles and your dick gets bigger. And then, you no, know, I'm at a stage where I'm at like, you know. Is that a plug, Sandman? Is that a plug? <laughs> no. Oh, my maybe, God. Maybe. I don't oh. know. Um, but like, it's like when you hit my age, it's like, it's like, like adult puberty. Like when everything just hits, it's like, yo, this had to change. Like, yeah, you know, enough, enough of this. You start to yeah. want different things. So where, next I thing. Was, where I was mentally is like, you know, in 20, when I was 26 oh. thinking, oh, I know I don't buy no, I don't take a no mortgage. To pay three thousand dollars for no house, I would just give our landlord a look a thousand hundred dollars to pay Randy, and I good. I don't have to worry about premises and maintenance, and then blah blah blah. I good. I pay the rent I out of there when I want. It's different. That now. investment mm -hmm. is different now. It's yep. The, the 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 mentality has changed, so you actually want home. And yeah. I'm at a point where you know. Like I in limbo right now because I kind of confused in my age because you know somebody else plays that they just build up just there to make money. <laughs> I almost call that fucking place home. So it hit me that you know you you gotta work on home man. And mm -hmm. it's, 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 yeah. It's, it's, yeah. And um, I would echo some of what you said. Um. For a while, I was living with my partner, and over the past couple of years, it's been about curating a space that reflects me and, you know, my needs for work and life, and that's comfortable. Um, yeah, home, I would say, yeah, the, the intentionality of... Uh, you know, just selecting the people that you want around you. Like you guys are my tribe and I know I'm always safe with y'all. I can share, I can, you know, that kind of a feeling of home that I get from y'all. And then also just kind of being so intentional about, you know, the 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 little tokens that, you know, like just talked about toys because that's what she likes. But and and at home for me it was candles and that's how I got into mm. candle making it's like what do you need in your space that just makes you feel you know good you know what what is it you know what kind of a, sometimes it's an aesthetic sometimes it's a scent sometimes it's like it reflects your hobbies or whatever just to have the things nearby where you don't have to leave to find that sort of gratification like home is your oasis it's your escape it's your like you you go out and you, you're, you're excited to go home you know and i love that I see, like the last person like when i was you know wherever i was you know enjoying myself somebody decided to surprise me you know the gesture was good but it was basically an, in, an infringement on you know my peace and so mm -hmm. the intentions were great um, I projected what the energy that I gave out in, you know, reception to that was very not ideal because the mindset was one of, you know, trying to be at peace and alone, you know. Surprise! Hey, what's up? <laughs> so... You know, yeah. I, it, and I couldn't help it and it was you know it was a, a, a very 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 dear person to me very dear person to me but at that point I just couldn't hold in what being the person I am I wear my heart on my sleeve man. I feel a certain way you're probably going to be able to tell so that relationship's ruined um, <laughs> sorry but, I'm uh, sorry I'm sorry the leader <laughs> anyway. 
It's how, it's how, it's how. It's how, it's how, so, it's real. Um, yeah. um, you know, nothing's ever ruined. You know, there's always retribution. Awesome. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right. Last one, Last one. Work. Where are you with it? Nine to five, hustle, both, none. And how do you keep saying in relation to it? Um, because I'm currently not sane, I'll just, you know, take this on first. <laughs> 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 like having my phone be my workspace is great because I'm not necessarily a nine to fiver. I'm a, I can roll out of bed at like 10 o'clock or I don't even have to roll out of bed. As long as I have the content going, I can stay in bed, like work for a solid two hours, just getting content out for people. And that's it. I'm done for the day. I can kick up and I'm, I'm great. But then there are times where it's just like my phone feels like jail. And not even sometimes, all the time my phone, like, because I, I can't get away from it. It's only me doing the job that I'm doing. So it's like, I can't run away for two seconds, you know? Like, just feels so heavy all the time. Yeah, so it's like, you know, it's and, and, and nine to whatever time, it's a hustle. And I have a love-hate relationship with the, the life that I've chosen for myself. But I, I wouldn't choose anything else right now. Yeah. That part. Yeah. Yeah. I love okay. it, but like, it's rough sometimes. But I think part of adulthood is just being okay with the decisions that you've made, having yeah. to be okay with it. It's like you chose it; like you had a choice. You chose that. You can't just flip flop and choose something else just because something's like, you know, not yeah. going the way that you'd like it to go right now. Yeah. So, I would say like, okay. I was there was a long time it was hustle for me and what i mean by hustle is like i didn't create any boundaries or structures with like you know the clients that i was working with i was checking my emails all the time even when i wasn't at my you know desk or workspace that i created for myself and so like i think sometimes when people say like hustle or, or, or nine to five like I, I sometimes feel like people look down on the term of nine to five because they think like, oh, you're living someone else's dream. So like some people take that term of like, oh, that means you're working for somebody else, which yes, yeah. I don't think that's the case. Right. So it's like and then sometimes people say like, oh, you're a hustler. Like that's amazing about you. And they think that a hustler is someone that's always on the go and doing things and and getting better versus like. I think there's a very good mixture of both. And so like when I was doing like that hustling piece, as I said, part of that was not creating boundaries and not doing what was good for me. And I know myself, I am a workaholic and there was a point in my life where I just had to be like, all right, I don't have a traditional nine to five. I don't have to, but I know I'm a morning person. I know that I love it when I get shit done, you know, right away. I'm very OCD about that you guys see that in the group chats but like mm -hmm. i had to finally create an area of like you know what i'm gonna start saying no to meetings after a specific amount of time like yes i have some international customers that i work with but hey they have other people that they work with so i can now i was now in a space where i can now start dictating what's gonna work for me and not vice versa and i'm very happy to be in that space because i worked really hard to get to that place so it's like for me i'm gonna say it's the nine to five because i refuse to then miss out on the rest of life as well right like while i do enjoy what i love like while i do enjoy what i do i do know that like if bahar doesn't turn off her laptop or if bahar doesn't remove that email app from her phone bahar is going to keep checking that shit hundred times and will not be present with the other relationships that she has or do other things like i came to grenada shut out my shit for a month right never done that in my life i've been working since i was i've been 15 years old and to take that even that caused me a little bit of anxiety i'm like oh my god i need to be doing something i need to be doing something so like 
that's what kept me insane is like creating those boundaries and saying like, hey, last meeting of the day, I'm not scheduling past 4 p.m. this week, right? If I need to accommodate for somebody at night, then I'm like, great. Then that means in the morning, I'm going to take my time, do some reading, do some yoga with Malaika. Hey, Malaika. But, you know, so those kind of things are like allowing other things to happen in my life and not just keeping it focused around work. Yeah, that's what you do. What do you do? I just... I'm a solutions consultant. So like a solutions consultant. So I basically help companies do a few things during COVID. It was like helping them identify how do they need, unfortunately you have to do reorganization. But now I kind of like the, almost like a project manager between like them and like possible other vendors. Solutions consultant. That's not like, like another it's a word. very broad term <laughs> because it's literally like they come to you and like, this is what we're facing. And it's like, problem. yeah, <laughs> exactly. And it's like, okay, okay let me see. Yeah. Or, or yeah. That's, that's your, that's your <laughs> there are some things where I'm just like, why am I, why did I say okay to this? And there's some things I'm just like, Hey, let's, let's, you know, let's make it happen. But so like, so like, So you're a consultant. Like, how do you advertise yourself? Like, hey, you got a problem? Just hit me up. Like, how so do you advertise yourself? I've, I've been in this. <laughs> it's funny because I was talking to Daily about this the other day. It's like, I have not had to do any type of, like, marking at all. A lot of my reputation has preceded me. So I've been okay. lucky in, in that way. Okay. And I'm in a space now where I'm like, I'm not looking to expand because I don't want to burn out. Um, I was fortunate enough that when COVID, unfortunately, COVID did not, fortunately, COVID did not impact me as it did others. But what happened during that time is that that led to total burnout for me. Is that because I was willing to be like, okay, let me take on this work to help these, you know, organizations. And then I, it just led to straight burnout. So like, I'm now in a good balance of like, I have the big, you know, contracts and so forth, and I'm good to go. And some are multi-year contracts as well. So it's like, it, it just works out. So no, so no advertising. It's been really more word of mouth. And now I'm in a place of deciding, like, do I have a space to take on anything else? So my question now is that, okay, so I'm just going to assume that while you, I guess, were going through school, you, you were the one that people could turn to for you know, to, f- to fix things, right? To solve problems, right? I can it just, is. I'm going to just assume that, <laughs> right? Right. And, and you took that and you created, you know, a, 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 a work handle around it. Yep. Is there anything that, <clears throat> that was, is that an actual job title or is it something that? It is actually. So I've, gone so many different ways of like what would I call myself first I was like consultant but like there are companies that actually have internal solutions consultants as well so like for software companies they have that for software companies for their own customers so it is a a title as I said I've just kind of been going back and forth I will say how I got into this area has been because I was curious so I didn't do anything special in school that was like, I could do this. I've told the girls before that sometimes I'm bullshitting on a meeting. Hopefully no, nobody, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it, it was more of like a lot of it, to be quite honest, has to do with the ability to listen and figure and then help. And, and the other part is like, is also knowing that actually a lot of these people can do these things on their own. They're just willing to pay for it. They're just like, we don't want to figure it out. You figure out. I'm about like, to pay you for it, like, right? And at some point, I used to give free advice, and then and then when I started giving free advice, I was like, "Wait the hell a minute!" Like you know, I was like, "Uh uh-uh. uh." And so then I started just kind of like, you know, monetizing on that, and it just grew into bigger, bigger projects. And as I said, some areas I was bullshitting because it is something that you have to continue to learn as you go, like learning the market, learning the technical capacities, looking at like, if I'm trying to support different areas of like, I better make sure that by the time we launch a start, a kickoff a project that I know my shit, even if I bullshitted in the first meeting, let's make sure I know that shit before we even kick off anything. So, so it's definitely not a school thing. It's not something I learned in school. It's just a learned skill. I continue to push forward on. Mm, That's awesome. Like, yeah. like a guru. <laughs> he's also our therapist 
<laughs> as you all are mine. <laughs> She's the one that tells us what to do. Well, if, if you could th- fix things, then you can fix people, right? So. Oh God. <laughs> Just being around B fixes me, so you know. Oh, oh, good. I need some fixing. Sweet, you're so sweet. <laughs> I, think I, I think I understand now. I think I understand it now. I get it. Oh, thanks, y'all. Yeah. Who's next? Giselle. Okay. What's your scene? Um, yeah. I have a, I I have a nine to five. Well, a seven forty five to two thirty or three or five or whatever time I get to leave. Um, the other week. It's uh, it's something that I actually have to just come to terms with the fact that I'm pretty good at it, and it's where I'm going to have to be for a while. And I don't mind it. It's just you know, with every job comes things that frustrate you, and it's the things that frustrate me that get 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 you know too much. Um, however, what keeps me sane through it is the number of, and I don't want to call them hustles, but they definitely are not nine to fives, but y'all know that I'm involved in a number of different things in entertainment seasonally. And then I recently picked up the things with Labukan and their Calabash nights with the music and the acting and the plays and all of that. And doing all of those things because it's more within my personality as a clown goofball. I love that. I love the organizing part of doing things backstage and, and those things bring me peace. The nine to five brings me a good salary and, uh, you know, just being able to be better at what it is, the thing that I'm good at, which is the teaching aspect of things. So it's a nine to five and a hustle all wrapped up together as one. Sometimes I feel like I'm never done working because sometimes I go from home, I go from work, to rehearsal or I go from work to one of these podcast meetings or you know just recordings and then go and sleep and go back to work and then there's a show or then there's a there's a concert that needs to be done we need to have a meeting again and but I thrive on that because these are things that I love to do genuinely love to do so it's not as financially lucrative as I would like it to be yet but the Lord knows that he has a greater plan for us. And by Thank us, I mean God. we. And by us, I mean we. But yeah, that's that's my work. I keep saying by uh, sometimes coming home and doing nothing. And sometimes I feel badly about that. It's like, Giselle, why are you so lazy? But I work a lot. Even if I'm not physically working, my mind is doing something, trying to prepare for something else, getting to that next stage. I do a lot of studies that people don't know about. A lot of times I come from come to do podcasts and I'm, I've literally done an online class before that with a student. So I'm, all, I'm always working. So I stay sane by watching a lot of TV or reading books or just sitting down, scrolling through TikTok. TikTok is toxic, but you see TikTok, it is so therapeutic for me. I don't think people understand. But yeah, I'm a person that I also like to. Mom, what are you saying there? It stimulates creativity. Seeing all it does is big on that. It, people, it's empty and, you know, you sleep a waste of time. But, like, important to what you feed is, of course, you know, when you see different things, that they, they get mm-hmm. the creative juices, like, like off the shelf, at least for me. For me, it sparked something. Like, I would be watching a TikTok not about food, not about drinks. And I see like maybe a fruit just randomly in the back, and I'll be like, "Oh my god, I can make a cocktail with that!" And I got this and this, and then like it sparks something, or like it'll spark some sort of other content, not necessarily anything to do with that. So, do your TikTok, real, girl. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because a lot of content that comes up for me on TikTok now has to do with um neurodivergent children and how they relate, and you know their families and how they do stuff. And whether people like to admit it, yes or no, there are a lot of students, they have a lot of children on the spectrum. It's not a bad thing. It just means that they learn differently or they, they, they conceptualize things differently. And it actually helps me in relation to the children because you can tell. All right, so this is not a typical child. You have to attack this in a certain type of way. And I would do it just based off of some of the things that I see and it works. 
it works with them and you know the more you more you click on the content the more you learn so i actually learn a lot from tiktok i also get a lot of music from tiktok which is something that i love as well so because i can't keep listening to certain genres of music every day all day so tiktok kind of I'm sorry, man. I just want to let you know that Ayana <laughs> does not have musical aspirations, but she does want to perfect one one verse of a one song. And you, and you were supposed to have a song with. Let's not do this here. So you could. You let let not do this here. Let not do this here. No, 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 no. That's that's let's not make the thing one sided, man. You just mm-hmm. spilling tea like accidentally, quote on. No, I'm just saying that it's an actual dream, which is not oh. ten years ago. She no, wants no, 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 to. No, no, no. no, no get, I actually get to that. want to be able to sing the words of that song. And you I want that for you. So, she's still is. You're not going to talk to them about that when you used to sing. She's still is. Huh? She says yes, I've, I've, spo- I've, I've, I've spoken to them about that period of life. Oh, okay. okay. At that time. She's an artist, girl. She ever read me all, you know. She, she... Oh, no, no. About DJ. Is that true? It's factual. Well, Giselle, you're holding out now. You're holding out, bitch? Bitch. So, can we get this on? This on? Can we add it to the um, to the background? Oh, Ooh, wow. could it be our theme song? It's, oh. called, it's called "Let Me Breathe." Did you remember that yourself? Why, why are you so tight lipped all of a sudden? Like, why are you so far, you girl? Like you didn't think oh, that why you fire out? She blushing. My friend is a hottest. Gosh, she's the hottest. Me, I had she all of that talent artist, up in your yeah. heavens. Song we need to close out this episode with the song. So, Sandman, you know this? Whenever you get yeah, to pull it up. Eh? Yeah, hey, Sandy! <laughs> Breach your contract. Good times, good times. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Who we got left? <laughs> the hands and Sandman? Um, okay. I don't think I want to really. I don't have any. I have a 95. That's it. And I am forever a hustler. If, you know, there's a, something to do and I could do it, I'll do it. You know, I will some, some, something fun. You 24-7 hot girl. Hello. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a full-time job. Full-time job, bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my work is also fluid in terms of, sometimes in terms of my schedule. So it sometimes means that I have all the flexibility and sometimes it means that I find myself working more often than you know than I would like to also yeah means you know you don't always have good boundaries with workers like with colleagues you know because your hours are fluid you find yourself working outside of people hours I call them because y'all know I after a certain time you just won't reach me period Notify anyway. Yes. Yeah. Can every you time. Like collaborate. Does anyone? <clears throat> because like I heard your stories. I I mean I didn't say mine yet, but like is there is there like collaborate like be you know of course you gotta talk to a lot of people etc. But you know you're just a genius who knows everything apparently that everyone will pay you to 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 help them with. Yeah, um, giving me real credit, huh? <laughs> As he should. <laughs> yeah, right. well, that's that's basically what you describe. As you deserve. As you deserve, yeah. Um, but like what about the collaboration aspect uh, in terms of work? Like, you know, um you know, you uh, you know, who from, from the bartender to the teacher to you know the, the everything is t- to the full time hard girl. Uh-huh. Like, are they do you all collaborate with people or do is there or are you is it like self-driven basically 
I think for for me, like from where I stand, like I would, con- whenever I get work to do that's not in teaching, one of my friends, I, I put it out there for them as well. Like, yo, I know somebody that can do this. I have a friend that can model or I have a friend that is really good with the social media things. I have a friend who is a mixologist. I have a friend who knows a lot about business stuff. Can you know they can help? And I think this is one of our biggest collaborations where we've been together because um, we we identified that the last time. Like each one of us has a part to play in this whole production. Here we brought together a lot of people initially, and we kind of have our own little part to play in this. And I know for sure that Ru and I have worked on projects. Um, together, Ayana and Ro would have worked on things together. Ayana and I would have worked on. I don't think I've ever worked hand in hand with B yet. But B, there's always time for that. Soon for business solutions. Yep. Peter, yeah, Olivia, poke me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, always been, it's always been difficult for me to collaborate because, um, you know, you know. It's not easy to trust everybody with the stuff that I do because, like, okay, mm-hmm. so let's talk about music. This this thing called creative differences, and you know, you have an idea in your mind, so you're trying to give someone else the interpretation of or get pitched for someone or an audience. And who is going to do it better than you? Um, so when you try to involve someone else, it becomes you know you have a lot of Is he stuck? Yeah. Oh, sorry, was me. <laughs> <laughs> he was stuck sorry, there for yeah, a while. Sorry, for a second. Sorry. Where I think just stay, stay over the whole... Say the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's hard. You um, were saying creative differences. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so yes. So because of creative differences, it's musically, it's been difficult to, to collaborate with um people me and John good. We mm-hmm. well, you know, it's hard for us to, anytime we say we're gonna do something, we, we probably start something, we never finish. Um and I see that happening. I don't maybe the problem is me. I that's that's how I in um bacon. I'm trying to expand. Um well I am expanding. <laughs> However, you know I've come to a point where, you know, you need extra people, other people to be involved in what you do. And, you know, this is the recipe that I've, you know, come up with since I was trying to get yelling in, in college. So how the hell am I going to just give it to somebody else and, you know, expect them not to run off with it and just do thing. And, you know, like all of that goes through my mind. So that makes it, collaborate in terms of you know with so i just always thought like you know maybe just me maybe i decided to do it for myself but like it's difficult i think and they would tell you about the life or maybe we could talk about it and it's all oh, everything is fast 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 you know you know this person you know that person and you and this person team up and then you get this money and then you go and you turn it over flipping and then you're a millionaire or you move to the else. so <clears throat> um it's something i've been trying to move towards i have people close to me that you know kind of been etching open ideas um at it and trying to establish contact uh not really contact but you know partnerships mm-hmm. i've been doing a terrible job must say um i'm cognizant, cognizant that i'm doing a terrible job i acknowledge that i a terrible job i try when i try to you know to work on that going forward mm-hmm. uh, yeah i just asked that question because maybe someone i could have put something out of your response did me going forward yeah. i would say for for us, stories, I think... don't trust nobody Oh, yes, yes. I think for us, sometimes what helps is collaboration. Um, and it doesn't always have to be this way because I've seen it work other ways. But at least for us, we're all in very different fields. 
So it's also easy to bring different skills of support to each other. So for example, Ro is really good at social media and I need support there because as much as I like social media, I, I'm just winging it, you know? I might have an eye for certain things, but I generally don't know what I'm doing, but Ro actually knows what she's doing. So I would reach out and say, you know, you need this kind of support. I can support you in that way and you can support me in this way. And so there's also fair exchange because I also, not because she's my friend, I can expect her to just give her services for free, which sometimes we do, we do for each other, but also it's when you're collaborating, especially when you're collaborating friends, it's important to value the person's expertise and value what they're giving to you and appreciate that. And as much as possible, pay your friends to collab even if they're collaborating you don't expect that because it's a friendship and because of the collaboration that it should be free don't assume that if you support your friends and you should support them financially but also there are ways that you can barter with your friends and be like yo i have this service and i can i can provide for you and we can exchange with that service that you could provide for me and even with friends that i have similar types of work with it's still the same approach it's like how can i support you how can you support me and finding a way to make it fair because yes you can trust people but you also can't owe people and it's not good to owe our friends i think it's you know anything i give i give freely and that's my standpoint and you can't um all, but you can't expect everybody else to think that way so you know allow your friends to offer it for free but don't assume <laughs> yeah so I, you know I that kind of way a couple of reciprocation and then expectations and then workload and a couple of other things come into to play when you're dealing with friends um not to agree but me for me um mm -hmm. i just wish i could split myself in two because um <laughs> you know because it's a lot to get done in terms of nobody can do for you what you can do for yourself <laughs> It's very true. Yeah, yeah. There's, that. there's that. And um, yeah. you know, okay, so we have work relationships and mm -hmm. um work relationships and you know, self, you know, it's like something always has to give for the other to mm -hmm. to um sometimes, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's just it's just a lot. It's just a lot. Just real quick, all in all, all in feeling uh sandman cheese quick giveaway on 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 straight no cheese at some point in the not too distant future okay cool, cool, cool. i'm trying to figure out how it is that we don't all have cheesecakes right now to eat on this episode like we all maybe like a tequila been... infused like that should have been the shot maybe oh, we didn't you know, think about this that definitely would have been a read but giselle didn't tell me that giselle was she was too busy yeah listening. I knew that was happening, so I just allowed that to happen. Yeah. That was going to happen. So yeah. Yeah. Busy butchering. It's his own fault. Always. Definitely Ah, uh, my name is the biggest one to call, you know. However, <laughs> I believe that was the last of our questions. And this is the end of our conversation tonight. We want to thank <clears throat> Sandman so much <laughs> for joining us tonight and being so open to conversation and I particularly liked the conversation that we had because it went along with the questions and then it kind of deviated. He learned more about us. He has a new friend named B. Yeah. Is John has a new Syrian, friend. Named well. Apparently. He has a new friend. Yeah, right. Um yeah. but no for real, Sandman. Thank you so much for joining us and being a part of the conversation. And I honestly mm -hmm. feel like we're gonna ask you to be a part again at some point. Um, because again, top tier conversation, your questions are kind of thought provoking and just how you go through your own thinking about things. Mm -hmm. I don't see you in a new light, but it's refreshing to know that someone like you, you know, who you see as a generally, generally silly person on the outside does so much introspection. No one look at me like that. You're silly. You're silly. You call me not a clown. <laughs> I did not, eh? <laughs> now, but thank you so much for real, for real, for joining us. And of course, please join us again. We might have you on. And of course, thank you for viewing. And if you have not viewed with us before, we are straight no chaser dot podcast on Instagram. If you go on our link in our bio, you will 
find us on Apple Podcasts, Anchor, YouTube, Spotify, or, or wherever you get your podcasts. Look at you, oh, you yeah. 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 Hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> That that was pretty good. I like I do I do jingles and ads and and shit and that's a perfect jingle voice. There you got another <clears> collaboration. Is it me? Is it me, Jesus? That was you. Yeah, Jesus? you you. That was awesome. Yeah, go go with yeah, right See, now, I'm so happy I left my base home tonight. Thank right God that you came. Right now, I have people busting style on me to come and do ads. Like you know, I'm so glad. I hope they're looking at. I hope they're looking at this. I'm Call me. Hey. Also follow Sandman on. Uh, Hold on, let me get them. Oh, everything. Get our first girl. Well, this was the part where you could sell yourself. You're supposed to get on. You're supposed to get our first girl. Oh, Are we doing the two the two accounts? Yes. Yeah. Okay, take yeah. it from the yeah. top. Make it drop. That's somewhere. Let's go. Yeah. So you can follow Sandman at Sanzilla, S-A-N-D-X-I-L-A. And you can especially follow him on Sandman's Cheese Quake at Sandman's underscore Cheese Quake. Not Cheesecake, Cheese Quake. So I guess, you know, the cheesecake's so good, it'll make you tremble. Yep. Yeah. In, in stores now, like in yeah, I have a in store. You know, I've, in calls and yeah, in, in calls down um close to, and it's uh, the reception is so overwhelming, it's so like ridiculous like, that I can't I can't take on anyone else right now unless I expand. It. That's I a good problem that, to have. <laughs> so, I love like, that is a great problem. It's a good problem so to go, have. So go and down the calls and grab grab up a cheese. It has my face on it. You know, a little cartoon. Oh, oh my! Uh, it does with a very big beard. <laughs> I thought you were like, with a bed. Yes, Giselle. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love that. Look, 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 look. We do that. What's it? Oh, okay. The, the bed is full. Yeah. Not you blushing in the corner there. I cut it. I cut it. I cut it. Thank you very much. Hi, guys. Thank you for Thank watching. You, this has been my episode.